Hey guys, uh, Ron checking in with another video for you. It's been a little while since I've done one. And uh, at the end of this video, I'll explain why that is and uh, why I took the time off from it. So um, yeah, I just wanted to get back at it and have some fun with it again. Um, like and subscribe if you haven't. If you have been following me and you're wondering what happened, I'll explain you like I say, and thanks for checking back in. So this is uh, the, the fourth in my little series that I chose. I did uh, guitarists, then singers, drummers. This is bass players that are currently active on the scene, rock and roll scene, that are, I guess, favorites of mine, current favorites of mine. This is not the best of all time. Um, that's a different uh, different story, different uh, set of people. So yeah, let's, let's do this and, and have some fun again. And again, at the end of the video, I'll explain myself <laughs> what happened to me for a few weeks there. <laughs> Um, okay, so um, I've got like, I think it's 13 again, like I've been doing. Um, first up is uh, the band Godsmack, and this is uh, one of their newer records. And uh, Robbie Merrill is the bass player from Godsmack. And this is a uh, pretty good album. This is not their most recent. This is the one they did before their most recent. So yeah, been a fan of Godsmack for a while, really hard hitting. Uh, Robbie's a cool bass player he's a pretty virtuoso on that instrument so you know that's cool he brings that to this uh, to this cool great band next up is uh, a guy that's uh, in a really cool loud band stained uh, Johnny April is his name this is one of my favorite stained records chapter 5 and uh, he's been with them a while now and uh, he's very kind of <laughs> you know, a uh, subdued type dude on the stage with them, and uh, but he's you know he's an important part of the uh, of the band sound and keeps them steady. Uh, next up is uh, a real favorite of mine, Stuart Chatwood from the Tea Party. I'm a big Tea Party fan. Uh, this guy is a virtual so musician, bass player. I love the fact he plays keys too on a lot of their big tracks, and. Uh, yeah, he's a real cool musician. All right, let's show some records here, some albums. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, um, still active, just played a big show. Uh, he's touring right now on his own. Uh, played a big show in Toronto at Bud Stage. And uh, it's Sting. This is one of my favorite of a little band called The Police he was in. And... Uh, you know, gotta give the guy credit. He still looks amazing. He he plays bass and sings. He's uh, I saw an interview with him on Rick Beattle's channel, and uh, wow, what an intelligent guy. I mean, yeah, he's he's got a certain style of personality about him. He doesn't lack confidence, that's for sure. But there's a good reason. The guy is super intelligent talking about music, that's for sure. Sting. Uh, here's another guy that's been around the corner. Most of these people have been around the corner a long time. They've uh, played a lot of shows, done a lot of music. And that's Duff McKagan. He's branched out on his own now. This is a great record that I've shown before. But, uh, you know, there he is out there still playing with Guns N' Roses. Great, you know, solid bass player, cool looking dude. I mean, to me, bass players are the member of the band that... Uh, not not overlooked. Come on, not overlooked at all. But uh, I like a bass. The, you know, the bass player to me is often my choices and my favorites are guys that are a little bit more kind of cool, laid back, um, have that cool, calm, steady vibe, and uh, that's what I like a lot in a bass player. Well, you can't mention bass players without mentioning one of the greats of all time for hard rock and metal scene, and that is Steve Harris. Steve Harris is the driving force behind Iron Maiden, and uh, to this day, he's still in charge, <laughs> big time with Maiden. Here's a name that uh, is funny. You mentioned a guy like Steve Harris and Duff McKagan, and then you mention Nate Mandel from Foo Fighters, and some people go like, "How can you mention him? Come on!" But Nate has been a you know, uh, serious musician and member of Foo Fighters pretty much, well, right from the second or first big studio record with the band and uh, after the one Dave did by himself, 
you know, the guy's a solid musician and I've seen him a few times. He's, he just concentrates on laying down that foundation uh, for the band and I'm a fan of the guy. I think he's, he's, he's a funny guy to listen to and watch. He's, he's very kind of subdued, doesn't come off like this rock star dude, but uh, solid musician. And here's one that makes me smile because it's a throwback to, uh, to the youthful days and that is Rick Savage from Def Leppard. So there's Rick there back in the day. He sure doesn't look like that now. Uh, you know, he's still doing his thing. They've become quite a mature kind of, you know, influential hard rock band. They're still doing it. Uh, you know, it's very sophisticated nowadays compared to what they used to be. They used to rock good, but uh, he doesn't even look like that anymore. He's done a number on himself with all this uh, um, plastic surgery. It's very obvious. So uh, I find it interesting to look at him now. Back in the day, he was a, I was a big fan of, of him. He, he had a really cool vibe and look. Good musician. Okay, here's a band that I've shown lots. And uh, it's Muse, three-piece band. Chris... Wolstenholm is the fellow's name that's the bass player. The guy is another guy that he doesn't really look the part. He's a big, tall guy, uh, you know, normal looking hair, sh you know, short cropped hair. He looks like a, he looks like a successful businessman, which he is, but uh, he's also an, an amazing musician and he, and he plays some really cool types of basses uh, with, um, yeah lights up on the neck like really cool instruments that's what they're all about cutting edge stuff so as a three-piece he's he's a pretty impressive musician here's a favorite of mine and favorite of many and it's stalwart in the scene and that's uh jeff amet from jeff amet from pearl jam jeff's been on the scene a long time what a great bass player fun to watch very energetic you know he's uh, not the kind of guy who just stands on the stage he rocks out hard guys a pretty cool guy well one of my absolute fave guys and uh, another guy that uh, although he does have a cool look uh, I think his, his look is cool but another tall kind of lanky seems to be a trend with a lot of bass players tall kind of uh, upright kind of body styles but anyways Adam Clayton and uh, he's the man in U2 that's been there a long time and uh, lays down that fan foundation for the band I just think he's he's the coolest guy the way he plays here's a real favorite of mine Robert DeLeal from Stone Temple Pilots I saw an interview with him not that long ago on the uh, Rick Beato site and it was an extensive interview if you if you get a chance check it out if you're into music and would like that but he uh, he shows off his uh, just musical intelligence in this interview and he plays some stuff on the spot and real cool one of the two brothers in STP but really really a great cool intelligent guy and lastly is a, a newer They've been around a while now, but they're, they are newer, and uh, I'm a fan big time. And that's Este Heim from the band Heim, and uh, Este's right there. She's, again, <laughs> again, another example. Really tall girl, uh, tall person, straight up body style. A lot of the bass players are like that. I don't, it's just the way it goes, I guess, but maybe that helps with carrying that big instrument all the time. But she plays a cool... She's got a cool look and she's very energetic, um, sings background for the band, but her bass playing is so unique in her style. She makes a lot of facial expressions, kind of odd. At first you're like, what the heck? But it's, it's cool, she's into the music, I love that. So that's my list of bass players. So that's my little series. Took a while to finish that off because I, uh, I jumped away from the videos for a while. So I'll explain quickly why. And uh, I'm gonna do another video right soon probably even tomorrow and uh, get back on it have some fun with it and show off so here's what happened my receiver for my stereo system 
that I've had for like 35 years started to give me trouble. And I started shopping around and I was really distracted from the music because I love to listen to music. That's my thing. I listen to at least an album or side of an album before work. I listen to my CDs on the way to work, although I don't drive far anymore. Um, listen to a lot of stuff on my headphones. So I was lost without my system working for a good couple of weeks. And then I was on vacation during that time as well. So what I, <laughs> I was really, so the end result is I, I did get the system back. I fixed my receiver rather than replacing it for now. And I was happy to do that cost saving decision, obviously, but also I, I love the sound of my stuff and it sounds good. So while I was off my system and not playing my system, I definitely got carried away with buying records. And I've never really bought a series of records in short succession like this. I've, I've generally accumulated my set and I tend to buy new. I bought a couple of used even, which is really <laughs> stepping outside the box for me, but um, had a lot of fun, but I bought a bunch of stuff. So my next video, I'm gonna show you guys the new stuff in my collection that I bought and, uh, and explain why and it'll give you a sense of you know whatever we'll just have some fun showing off some stuff and you know shows the kind of like the I'm, my goal with my my collection is to uh steadily expand it okay so try to have different branches of the rock tree i like to call it because i'm a rock guy and you know pretty much needs to be rock music but it uh for me but there's various sounds from rock so yeah, that's the next video coming at you. I hope you like this one. Thanks a lot if you checked in again. And uh, yeah, have a great day. See ya.